everyone! Today I'm going to be building the Odin Mechanical Keyboard DIY Kit, which is a kit with an aluminum case and a 100% layout. This was sent to me by kbdfans.com to share with you all. This build will be a themed build, and it'll be based on Evangelion Unit 02, piloted by Oscar Langley from Neon Genesis Evangelion. The box the kit came in looks absolutely beautiful, and everything was packaged really well. Inside, I found stabilizers and gasket strips, a daughter board, case foam, a bag with tools and rubber feet, a hot swap PCB with RGB, PCB foam, brass and polycarbonate plate options, and finally the aluminum case itself. I got mine in the burgundy red color option. It features the symbol of Odin on the right side of the keyboard as a translucent badge and on the aluminum weight bar on the bottom. My first impression of this case is that it's very high quality and quite heavy. I did weigh it prior to beginning the build and it weighed about 4.5 pounds. I also like the detail of the USB port area, which is protected by a separate piece that we'll be opening up later. To start, I put down my rose pink American Haptics work mat. I brought out both bags included with the keyboard kit and grabbed the PCB and daughter board. I want to test out the PCB before I begin, so I opened up the daughter board and cable. I first plugged the cable into the daughter board and then plugged it into the PCB. I made sure to orientate it correctly so no pins are bent. Then I plugged in my USB-C cable and opened up VIA on my MacBook. I grabbed my pink fine tip tweezers from Stationery Stash and touched the tips to each hot swap socket on the back of the PCB. I made sure each key lit up in VIA which meant that the PCB was in good working order. I always make sure to do this before starting the build itself in case I need to obtain a replacement. For stabilizers, I decided to try out owl stabs for the first time which I purchased from PK Keyboards. You can get 5% off on their website using my code MOCHI. I bought the 100% kit in black which comes with 18 stab housings and stems, 7 2 unit wires, 1 7 unit wire, and 1 6.25 unit wire. Because this PCB supports the longer spacebar, I made sure to grab the 7 unit wire. I'm really excited to try these because I've heard so many good things about the wires which are made of what they call liquid metal. This means they're made out of a shape memory alloy and they're supposed to be resistant to warping and don't require any balancing. After pulling out the wires I needed, I opened up the small bag that comes with the kit. Inside, I found a sheet containing 18 strips of Teflon tape. I applied them to my PCB using my fine tip tweezers, making sure that they were orientated correctly to match the holes that the stabs will go into. Next, I'll be lubing the housings and stems, so I put down a shop rag to prepare my workspace. For these stabs, I'll be using 205G0, which I'll apply out of my Kinetic Labs palette. This build needs 7 stabilizers in total, so I grabbed 14 housings and 14 stems. As I applied the lube, I went ahead and began assembling the stabilizers, including the wires. Because I use a syringe to lube the wires after they're installed, I skip this step for now. Now that all seven stabilizers are ready to go, the next step will be to install them onto the PCB. I brought out my new Wow Stick electric screwdriver to help me out. The Owl Stabs kit also came with screws and washers, which were pretty standard, and I installed them the same way as any other set. Another cool thing about this kit is that it comes with wire cushions, which help with the wire rattle. These stabilizers are supposed to be pretty good about wire rattle, but I wanted to try the full experience with the owl stabs, so I decided to add them. These just slip right underneath the wire. I had a little bit of trouble adding a cushion to the enter key since the wire is so close to the right shift key stabilizer, so I just trimmed the bit to fit. Here's how everything looks so far. The stabilizers are pretty much ready to go, so I'm going to lube the stabilizer wires with the stabilizer grease syringe kit from the Key Dot Company. 
I put a link to this syringe kit in the description below in case you want to check it out. And don't forget that you can get 5% off by using my code MOCHI. I applied the grease to the wires and used a stem holder to help me move the stabilizer grease around. To test out how they sound and feel so far, I grabbed the switches I plan to use for the build and inserted them into the PCB where the stabs are. I also added some keycaps. I was able to adjust where needed and the stabilizer process is finally done. To continue the case assembly, the next step is to add on the PCB foam. This foam is made out of Poron. KBD fans sent me two options for the plate, which is brass and polycarbonate. I decided to go with the brass plate for the sound profile and the look. This is a gasket mounted keyboard, so I'll be adding the included gasket strips next. It definitely helped to use my tweezers, and this part of the process was pretty simple. I placed the plate right on top of the PCB and I'm now ready to add switches. For switches, I'll be using Texi Ruby switches sent to me from Prevail Key Co. These are linear switches and they feature a polycarbonate mix housing and a long pole palm stem. They have a 63.5 gram gold plated progressive spring. I lubed these with 205G0 and added Duroc films. I'll definitely leave a link to these down below and you can use my code MOCHI for 5% off on Prevail Key Co's website. I added the switches to my build and I think they look pretty great with the brass plate. I'm beginning to see the theme I planned for the keyboard, so I'm happy about the results so far. It's time to begin prepping the case so that I can add the PCB. I turned the case over to open it up and while I'm at this point, I thought it would be a good time to add the four rubber feet to the bottom of the keyboard. I used tweezers to apply them then I grabbed my wow stick to remove the screws holding the case together. The wow stick came with a magnetic screw pad, so I used that to keep the screws organized. After opening the case up, I put the top to the side and removed the four screws that will allow me to access the compartment that will hold the daughter board. The keyboard kit lists this as a USB port protector. To install the daughter board, I detach the cable from the PCB and place it into the small compartment. There are four small screws that'll hold it into place and I use my wow stick to secure it. I pulled the cable through the hole at the bottom and secured this piece as well with the screws I removed earlier. I placed the included case foam into the case reattached the cable to the PCB, then added the PCB sandwich. Everything fit into the case very well, so I put the top of the case back on. I carefully turned it all over and screwed in the screws to hold everything together. I'm so close to being able to add keycaps, but just to make sure everything is working okay so far, I plugged in my USB-C cable into the newly installed USB port and used the keyboard checker in VIA. I love how the RGB looks with these switches and I'm excited to see how nice the badge looks when lit up too. At this point in the process, my vision for my AVA 02 keyboard is starting to come together and I'm really excited to finish the build. It's nice to see how the switches look against the brass plate and even the owl stabs look really great with it. I've had a lot of fun building this keyboard so far, but now that it's time for me to add the keycaps, I'm very eager to complete it. For the keycaps, I'll be using Max Key Berserk keycaps that KBD fans also sent me. As the name implies, this set was inspired by Evangelion and the red and yellow color theme matches Asuka's Ava. In case you aren't familiar with the anime, Berserk refers to the state an Ava is in when it's out of control. The set contains novelties that are true to the Evangelion theme, but it also has a few novelties for the Flash and Iron Man that match the color theme as well. They are double shot ABS and feature a tall SA profile. I love that this set supports so many layout types, including the longer spacebar and the longer control and alt keys. This keyboard features both types and I enjoyed adding the Ava theme novelty keycaps throughout the keyboard. Now the keyboard build is fully done. To finish everything off, I'm going to bring out my new themed coiled USB-C cable sent to me from personalloot.com. 
I requested to have it made in colors that would match the theme and they did an amazing job doing so. I get most of my cables from them, so definitely check them out if you are in need of a quality cable for your keyboard. I think my favorite part of the cable is the red aviator connector because it's a nice vibrant red and matches the keycaps and case. After carefully connecting the two cable halves together and screwing the ring in place, I plugged it into the keyboard and I'm super happy with how they look together. This is one of the highest quality builds I've worked on lately and I've been planning this Evangelion 02 themed keyboard for a very long time, so I'm feeling very accomplished with adding this build to my collection. My only issue with this keyboard is that I had some trouble fitting in an artisan keycap because of how the case was designed. My PCB seems to sit a little too far to the left inside of the case and even with trying to reposition it, the problem remains. Regardless, I do want to share this adorable Asuka Artisan keycap sent to me from Tulip Clay. I did place it on the escape key for some photos, but unfortunately it gets stuck when the key is pressed. I don't fault Tulip Clay for this though, as it works just fine on other keyboards in this style. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the quality of this build, and I always enjoy working with KBD fans and their products, both as a collaboration partner and as a customer. At the time of filming this video, I don't see any indication that KBD fans will have another round of availability for this kit, but I really hope they do. The keyboard itself had a pre-order price of $319 USD, and I definitely do see that the quality is there for the price. As for the keycap set, that is available on their website in stock for about $170 USD. I do recommend this kit only if you're someone who's had experience with assembling keyboards already, because I think it could be a bit of a challenge for someone who's new to the process. While there's a lot of steps involved and may not be ideal for someone who hasn't had the time to work with screw-in stabilizers or for someone who doesn't know the parts of a keyboard, it could be a great learning experience, but maybe not at this price point for someone just starting out. As I said earlier though, the quality is there and I very much love the results. As for the sound profile, I'll be sharing a sound test like usual at the end of the video, but typing on it feels amazing with these smooth linear switches from Prevail Keyco and the owl stabs from PK Keyboards. These double shot ABS keycaps with the SA profile give it a higher pitched sound while typing and the keyboard itself feels very dense and sturdy. After finishing the build, I weighed the keyboard one final time and it came out to be around 5 pounds. The full size layout definitely contributes to the weight and the device being this big and heavy is something I envisioned for this Ava 02 theme mechanical keyboard. If you like this build, please thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel for more. I do plan to work on more themed keyboards like this in the future and I also have an overview video coming up soon. Thank you again to KBD fans for sending this keyboard kit out and thank you all for watching.